Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to an episode of Seek and Destroy. And today I just wanted to go over that Werewolf by Night trailer just a little bit more because after I did my reaction, I actually went through and uh, watched it probably like 10 more times. And then I went out on YouTube and looked for other people's reaction videos and to see what, you know, kind of their reactions. And there was definitely a mixed bag, but I saw a lot of people that kind of really dug the vibe. Uh, mostly people closer to my age that were kind of digging the homages to old movies. Um, some of the younger reaction people I saw at least knew that it was a, a nod to old Universal movies, but I don't know if they appreciated it, some of them, on the level that uh, some of us older re reaction uh, people you know, felt about it. So, uh, so for me, like when I was watching this, I got sucked in. Like as soon as it had the narration, you know, like uh, this Halloween, you know, you will not believe the terror, the horror of Werewolf by Night. Like I thought that was... I pulled me in immediately and it had that title card that looked like li really retro and old, like 1930s and 40s, um, like Hammer Films. That's what I was trying to think of when I was making my reaction and I couldn't. Um, but Hammer Films had those like kind of cuts and, and, and kind of pre presentation of their movies. Um, and so when I was going through this, though, I was like, you know, I have some theories now. Now that I've watched it a few times and I've started to piece together a few scenes, because, again, I don't think this is a full length movie. I think it's just like maybe 40 minutes to an hour, maybe. And uh, and so I think they showed like they, they could only show so much horror because I feel like there's still going to be action and, you know, Marvel stuff in this. So I think it's going to start off kind of horror ish and then kind of and with a little bit of comedy, uh, you know, and then then get into the, the adventure stuff. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second, because um, when the trailer starts and you have like the, the, the woman who's narrating, who's like ahead of this cabal or whatever they are, and she's like, hey one of you isn't who you say you are like we have all hunters here but one of you is a monster masquerading as a hunter and now yes she could be a hundred percent referring to werewolf by night because now we know who the actor is who's playing him um who was uh, i think did some of the singing in uh, uh coco i think as uh, uh one of the characters there and uh and so there was and i think actually the director michael giacchino who did music for that i believe I don't know. There's like a big connection. And, uh, and I don't know, like Michael Giacchino, I, I only know his work on some of the movies that have been coming out, you know, Marvel movies and some other stuff. I think he did the Batman as well and very talented composer. And, and it was funny because when I was watching this, I got some Rob Zombie vibes. I'm like, this feels like like someone like a Rob Zombie would come up with this, you know, like this take on Werewolf by Night. And funny enough, it's it's from a musician, you know, like uh, Michael Giacchino. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Like, uh, cause I, I totally got that vibe when I was watching it. I was like, this feels like a Rob Zombie thing or like something, a you know, musician or someone with a, a music background would come up with. And then uh, here we are with Michael Giacchino. So I was like, wow, good job for him, you know, to, to go from composer to director. And I think he's directed some shorts too, like some other stuff that I haven't seen yet, like maybe Star Wars or Star Trek or one of those. And I'm just like, okay, cool. The guy has an, an, an itch and he wants to do this stuff and he clearly has some talent towards it because this, at least to me, looks really, really cool. It's a fun take on something to do in the Marvel Universe, you know. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of swept away by the, the overall aesthetic of this trailer. And again, it could just be a creative trailer and maybe the movie doesn't reflect it on this level, but I hope it does. I hope the movie is exactly like this trailer is cut. Uh, so let's get into some of the stuff I saw in the trailer. Uh, first off, you have Werewolf by Night, you know, he's sitting in the crowd and then at some point he gets in the cage and he transforms and you see that at the end where uh, the actress, um, uh, her last name's Donnelly. I, I don't know if she's related to me or not, but we have the same last name. Uh, I, she's playing Elsa Bloodstone, which is very cool because I really, really like that character and got pulled into that character in recent years, um, you know, reading more supernatural stuff from Marvel. Uh, and so I'm happy to see a, a version of her in this. And I think she'll probably start off where she seems like a helpless um, you know, uh, Danzel, but she'll probably, you know, reveal herself to, to be a full on monster hunter, or maybe this will be the story that makes her become a monster hunter. That could be the case too. Uh, because I had a theory at the beginning, there's that, that corpse in the tombstone or in the, not in the tombstone, but in the, in the casket that is like, uh, it looks like Garth, the zombie from Marvel. And it's kind of like, uh, I'll be rotting for you, you know? Uh, he, I think, is actually some I saw online people theorizing that he's Ulysses Bloodstone and that he has the magic gem that is passed on to his daughter. So, again, this could be an origin story for Elsa Bloodstone as much as it is one for uh, Werewolf by Night. So that that would be really cool if we see her not the badass that she becomes yet, but in this story, 
learns to defend herself, kind of like Sarah Connor from the first Terminator. And then by the end, she survives. And then in the, the next time we see her, she's like slicing, you know, werewolf heads off and stuff and vampires apart. That would be really awesome. Um, the other thing, though, is man thing. <laughs> the other thing is uh, man thing is in this. And we see like two shots of him. I think even one shot where um, Jack Russell, werewolf by night, is up against a, a bush or something. And a hand comes through and grabs him and pulls him. I believe that's actually man thing's hand. Uh, because later on when we see a shot of man thing you have Yovan, who is the big burly guy with the beard um, he comes in with like an axe and you see him in a couple shots walking through the hedge maze with an act with that axe and uh, and then you see a shot of man thing in that same maze uh, area holding on to someone's head and like melting their head with a big hand so again I think that hand that comes through and grabs Jack Russell is probably man things and I think he's uh, man thing at some point is going to kill Yovan uh, the big burly guy with the beard uh, so so yeah and then obviously you see the the main woman who's hosting this event you see her get pulled into the cage and maybe someone's cutting her arm apart or something but whoever they cast to play her she's great in the trailer so I can't wait to see her in the movie because she seems like that kind of character that you just like that woman from Midnight Mass that you're just like I want to I hate this person I hate this character and it takes a really good actor to, to pull that off and make you really hate their character so uh so i think she i feel like she's gonna serve that purpose where you're she, maybe she's up to something um that the other hunters didn't know about um so yeah i'm, I'm curious to, to learn more about that and to see if that is actually garth the zombie or if that is ulysses i'm interested in that as well and then the last thing i want to mention is the tva from loki uh, those guards in the hallway at uh, where they like i said they show some horror elements but then they show some action so uh, shots where jack russell jumps into a, a hallway i think it's jack russell he jumps into a hallway and he starts fighting all the guards um and then you know one of them is like shocking them from the back with their with their shock sticks or whatever um and and i which are supposed to like make things evaporate i think i think maybe there's a couple different settings like i can't remember loki too too well um but anyway the tva is there they're lining the hallways they're acting as security during this event for the hunters and that's really interesting because it makes me wonder if this takes place out of time if this takes place in another realm that is like just all movie monsters like it's a, a, a monster verse essentially uh you know that would be really cool um or if it's something that is actually set in the the 616 marvel universe and it just takes place before loki um although because i saw someone say well it can't be the tva because loki erased the tva and i said no they didn't at the end of loki there's still the tva i mean he sh you know loki shows up and meets owen wilson but a variant of him so now there's variants of the TVA, whereas before there, you know, there wasn't. Um, so the TVA, their, their timeline all got rewritten too by the existence of Kang the Conqueror again. So, so to me, I'm like, no, it could absolutely could be the TVA. Abs you know, and it looks like them and they have the same weapons. So them being involved, I think, is going to directly tie into Man-Thing. Uh, my friend Nathan is a huge Man-Thing fan. I don't know that much about Man-Thing outside of a couple books that I've read, like Marvel Zombies 3 and 4 and couple other things that i've read of, uh, of him and i think it one of his original runs i've uh, gleaned through at one point but uh he is known as the nexus of all realities he actually is essential to multiverse travel um kind of like how uh america chavez was in the doctor strange a multiverse of madness movie he can essentially move things through the multiverse uh you know and that's kind of what he is uh, on some level he's not just a swamp thing knockoff he has a, a more cosmic um, purpose uh, you know to than that uh, so uh, and I think his name is Ted Salas like maybe something like that his real name he's like a scientist so it's a little bit like Swamp Thing but like I said he ultimately is more cosmic than something like a Swamp Thing is Swamp Thing is tethered to earth and like you know the green or whatever as they added in years later but uh, but with Man Thing he's connected to the multiverse on, on some level so the TVA there you know being there in a, a story with man thing makes a lot of sense to me uh so i'm curious to see what the tva's role is going to be in this what man thing's role is going to be i like the idea of it being a monster story but setting up elsa bloodstone the monster we're following is a werewolf but then the you know the appearance of something like man thing that throws a wrench in the spokes of whatever the plans were for the hunters like, I think all that could be really cool, and I would love to see a monster versus monster fight at the end with uh, Jack Russell versus Man-Thing. I think that would be really, really cool. Uh, so what do you think, you know, from the trailer? Is there anything that you think I missed or we didn't go over? Let me know, and as always, we'll continue that conversation down in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.